Welcome into the MGM Grand here in Las Vegas. We're just a stone's throw from where Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder will run it back in their rematch. I'm Stan Verrett along with Mark Kriegel. Mark, we had the pre-fight news conferences uh, on Wednesday. What was your takeaway from what you saw from the two men? They're like an old married couple at this point. <laughs> it's like, you know, honey, I can't believe you left the toilet seat up again. The part that became authentically heated Yep. was when they said, I'm responsible for your fame. No, I'm responsible for, for your fame. And that they really meant, the, the irony is that they need each other. Yep. You cannot be an epic heavyweight unless you have an epic opponent. And I think that what we've lacked here for, for decades, um, certainly this century, it's not a lack of talent. These guys didn't have interesting guys to fight. They didn't have rivalries. Now you have a, a real rivalry. They need each other. And a contradiction that's unique to this kind of sport, you need what you want to destroy. Let's talk a little bit about what both fighters are saying leading up to this fight. Uh, one thing that is interesting from Tyson Fury, he boxed Deontay Wilder the first time, and it was successful. He, he thinks that he won the fight, even though it was a split decision draw. Now he says he's going to go for the knockout, and he's going to try to knock him out in two rounds. Are you buying that, or, or does he just want Wilder to think that? I'm actually buying it. Wow. Okay. I was in his camp for a while. I asked him. I asked his trainer, Sugar Hill Stewart. I asked Andy Lee, who was with both of those guys from, from Kronk in Detroit till now. Yep. And they swear this is the truth. Tyson says, I can't get a decision. I outboxed him once. I didn't get a decision. I think... The truth of it is he can outbox him and still get knocked out. And it, it's okay. sort of unique to, to Wilder. At some point, he's going to have to cross the line mm -hmm. and come in and, and hurt him. So why not force the issue? If you, if you look at what Wilder does, he needs room to throw that right hand. Yep. And, and for, for, for generations, it's been thought that the most destructive punch in boxing is the short shot. Wilder, Wilder throws everything on its head. He needs, he's a long shot. It yeah. might be the most destructive punch in history, but he needs room to throw it. Safest place to be, inside. Tyson knows how to do it. He's a technician. Deontay's not. So it, it, it makes a certain amount of sense. You mentioned the trainer. He decided to part ways with Ben Davidson, though, mm -hmm. they, though they are still on great terms. Mm -hmm. uh, and he decides to go to Sugar Hill Stewart, who he worked with when he went to Kronk in 2010, just showed up at the gym and said, hey, I'm here, make me a champion. Uh, only lasted a month then, but now he says in training for the knockout, he needed Sugar Hill Stewart. What does he add to Tyson Fury? First of all, he showed up at Kronk looking for Emmanuel Stewart, who was the, yep. the dean of American trainers, and, and Sugar Hill was his chief apprentice. He walks into the gym. He takes a fight from Manchester to Detroit, walks into the gym unannounced, asks for Emmanuel, says, who are you, a guy at the desk says, I'm the next heavyweight champion of the world. Emmanuel loved him, invited him to stay. They all lived together. Um, he thought he needed a more fundamental way to attack. Yep. And the, the fight he keeps referring to in this is not a great boxing match. It's Hagler-Hearns. And that didn't work out for the Kronk fighter. Right. Hearns. But, but it was I, a war. But I think, that, I think that he sees it on those terms. Let's get it on. I think he wants to press the issue. Um, I, I think he's actually being sincere. The way you will know whether he was conning you or not is his weight. So if he steps on the scale Friday and he's north of 265, if he's actually 270. Which he has promised he, to do. Okay. That necessitates a certain type of style. He's not going to be able to dance around for 12 rounds at 270. If he comes in at that, you know he means business. His father also says that he thinks if he comes in at 270, he can take the shot that he took in the 12th round, and he can weather it without getting hurt. It, is there an advantage for him coming in as a bigger man to be able to withstand uh, uh, Wilder's power if he connects? Well, I'm, listen, I, I think to Wilder could knock down anything or anybody. You're a sumo wrestler. It doesn't matter. Yeah. To me, the advantage of being bigger and stronger is, again, on the inside. Okay. Wilder is a complete anomaly. He's a skinny guy with, with, with skinny legs. If you're 270 pressing up, leaning on leaning a guy on, right. who's, who's 220, you have an advantage. You're going to take something from him. You're going to tire him out. So I think that it, it, it may or may not help him to take the shot, but it will definitely help him on the inside. Fury also has to 
think about whether or not he wants to or not. That cut from the fight with Otto Valin, 47 stitches, two, actually two cuts. Uh, five months, is that sufficient time for that to heal enough that it's not a factor? No. No. It's not ideal. Right. It, I mean, look, is it healed enough? We'll see. It is not ideal. I've spoken to physicians who are cut men. They said, you know, five months is, is too little. You want a year. Um, that being said, the tissue will never be as strong as it was, but it is another reason for Tyson to force the issue. I'm not going to wait around for this cut to get bad. I'm going to press the issue now so he doesn't have time to poke at it. Wilder has been instructed. I don't know if he'll do it. First thing you do is jab at that cut. Left jab. Right, because that, that'll put you closest, that'll put you closest to, to the right eye. Um, it's even money whether or not Deontay <laughs> follows up on that. Deontay has this marvelous conceit that whatever he hits, Yep. with that right hand will go down. And with the exception of, of Tyson Fury, there, there's nothing to disabuse him of that notion. I mean, he's right. And the first fight was Stavern, but he came back and, <laughs> and finished him off. Stavern, Stavern's yeah. a, a funny case. I think, it, I think people miss what that fight was about. I was there, and you always wonder about a, a pure puncher. The first time he doesn't take a guy out early, will he panic? Yep. Will he get constricted? I mean, look, we, we saw Mike Tyson do that. You, know, you start to think, wait, this guy just took my best shot. And Deontay, for whatever you want to say about his style or his lack of technical schooling, he adapted very well that night. Yep. On the other hand, Stavern sent a, spent a good long time in the hospital following that. Fighting, fighting Deontay Wilder is, is a very traumatic proposition. Okay, so what I took from Wilder at the news conference Wednesday was that, hey, I, I did enough in that first fight, catching him in the ninth and in the 12th, and all I have to do is do that again. I didn't sense that he felt like there was any need for any big changes in terms of his personnel, in his camp, or, or his strategy, whereas Fury changed up everything. Is, is Wilder good standing Pat? I, I, think that you're, I think you're reading it. I don't know if he's good standing Pat, but I think you're reading it correctly. I think that's an, that's an accurate portrait of, of where he's at. One of the things that wasn't reported when I got from him in Tuscaloosa was that his forearm was broken. He hit a, he hit a, spar, a sparring partner on and the elbow. And for the first fight. Early. So it was in a cast for a good long time. And his position is, I had a cast on it. I sparred, but all I did was use my left hand. It affected my timing. Maybe he didn't take while, uh, Fury seriously enough, but it affected my timing. And from my perspective, Deontay Wilder, once I figured it out, I put him down in two of the last four rounds. So why do I got to change anything? All right. All right. We'll see if it's an effective strategy. Tyson Fury predicting a second round knockout. Deontay Wilder also predicting a knockout, but not giving us a specific round. You can see how it all happens. ESPN pay-per-view Saturday. Wilder Fury 2. Mark, great spending some time Thanks, with buddy. you, my man. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.